and I'm sure there's a lot of artists here right now because this neighborhood is like really funky. Um, I, I actually was uh, dating an artist recently, but um, you know artists. <laughs> It's, uh, well, when he said he lived out of his studio, I thought he meant like one of those buildings that has a Chipotle in the lobby. And um, <laughs> it was just like a warehouse. Um, um, my agency is represented by Hex Luxury Group, FTW, which does stand for Fuck the World LLC, um, <laughs> which is a parent company of the editorial commerce microinvesting content platform plus Web3, hashtag Lady Chief which is a subsidiary of the Yakuza. Um, which I'm proud to say also owns the media conglomerate that is responsible for closing down book forums. Uh, art forums next! <laughs> Not that funny, is it? You know, uh, it's really exciting to be here. A lot of the general pub... <laughs> the general public. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm sort of a, a higher end arbiter of cultural cachet that makes it difficult to say words like the general public <laughs> without throwing up in my mouth a little bit, so it'll excuse me. <laughs> Most of, let's just say you people, are surprised to learn that uh, the agency actually is owned by the mob, but um, Hex Luxury Group and I think the museum space writ large are part of a long tradition of corrupt governments and war criminals leveraging the cultural institution to ensure that the population is appeased through aesthetic gestures that tend to fall short of real political action. <laughs> You know, the, the Whitney Museum um, actually allowed weapons manufacturer Warren B. Canders to be on their board for years before capitulating to activist demands to have him removed. And, you know, after his removal, the croissants in the cafe got really bad. <laughs> so think about that next time you want to hold the board accountable. <laughs> Not that any board member of this museum has any problem whatsoever. And I definitely um, use New York as an example because the art world here in Los Angeles is more aligned with Hollywood where like nothing uh, weird or, or bad happens. <laughs> but we are so glad to be a part of LA Art Week. It's such a special time for artists and thinkers and makers and influencers and the general public to just <laughs> assert themselves as part of a community by taking pictures next to pools. Um, and we also uh, are really working hard to just create more accessibility uh, for emerging artists. And we do that by hiring them to DJ after parties for more established artists. <laughs> now this show is called uh, Biscuits for some reason, and you know, my dad had a saying when things were good that everything's just gravy. But sometimes when you come from a country with a lot of political unrest, there is no gravy. There's just biscuits. <laughs> and that's just an interpretation that I came up with. <laughs> so I wanted to start here um, in front of uh, this painting, which I'm sure is a landscape, but it also represents the losing of one's shit. And as, which is something that I've been accused of a lot by every man I've dated. And the thing about being an artist is that it's part of getting to the point of where you know things good is losing your shit along the way. And so I think this represents the artist's fantasy of having the shit given back. <laughs> also, as a, as a, and, and, and some would say maybe it's a feminist repast to the amount of like female genitalia that you see in art history, but also is a good reminder of how to take care of the are you getting this? I learned, this is what I learned from Cosmopolitan Magazine of how to handle the male form. 
in life and in art history. <laughs> this is a smaller piece and it's called The Banana Speaks. And I think it has something to do with sometimes, okay, so this is complicated. Not humor is something that you don't often see um, in the art world. Humor is usually a thing that unattractive people, um, people who don't dress good, um, you know, men with weak chins, like sucky women. It's just it's just something that like people who like aren't as conventionally attractive as me use um, to procreate. Um, <laughs> I will uh, take your uncomfortable giggling as a form of assent. <laughs> so this is uh, about, now I'm not really familiar with the work of Sean Baudrillard, but he said something about simulation and simulacra, and a banana is usually a symbol of humor that is now speaking through the painting. And the banana is also used in humorous situations to represent a microphone. But I don't know if it's allowed, if I'm holding the banana, can you have a representation of the thing using the thing in front of the actual thing that it's supposed to represent? Oh, I, I did want to look at something over here. You can film. Actually, I want you to. None of this exists until it's on social media. called reverse alphabet and it's what we would call deceptively simple which is a term that art critics like to use when they don't know what they're looking at um, and what's so interesting about it is that the alphabet is backwards and some would suggest that it involves the artist's intention to make work that utilizes language while escaping the onus of meaning and then I did another uh, meeting with the Google, and I found out that Farsi is actually written right to left. So I just, I think she just didn't know. <laughs> like, so don't, she's not here, like don't tell her, but like the, the American alphabet, like it goes the, it goes the other way. <laughs> Do they know that it's hung like this? It is really embarrassing, but we'll move on. So this is a series, it's called Abstract Pussies, um, which is where I store a lot of my rose quartzes and um, <laughs> other gemstones for like good luck and getting me laid and stuff like that. Um, it's like super difficult to paint women because a lot of people do it. So it's like, how do you paint like women stuff without actually doing it? And so we have the pussy filter through a lot of different painterly gestures, which is good, I think. I think it's good to hide behind as many painterly gestures as possible. I think, I think uh, representation is bad. I think movies are, you know, while we're at it, I think movies are bad and I'm sick of them. <laughs> I'm scared when I see nude bodies on screen or animated in any form. I think storytelling is to fake, and uh, if I can help it, I, I honestly just avoid retelling any kind of phenomena whatsoever. This is from a series known as the Ongoing Peter and Jane series. Peter and Jane is a, is a series of children's books, so like, could, so children can learn English good from another country. Um, and what Tala has done is sort of recreated scenes from these books using outsourced labor 
Although I think it's, uh, it's a little ironic that these paintings are supposed to be about being alienated from American culture because she's very quick to use outsourced labor. <laughs> Do you get it? Also, if anyone has any merch ideas, just shout them out. <laughs> so this room represents a lot of um, Tala Madani's interest in like peepees and like peepees and like big dicks and, and schlongs and big old dongers and, and dangalongs and like bean tubing and like baby's arms holding an apple and um, you know, not, I'm, I'm, per I'm not threatened by it personally, but I do think it has a lot to do with um, processing how power moves through society. <laughs> and this animation is, is, is actually um, has a lot to do with, you know, like how culture is formed. Oh, hold on a second, I need to check some text messages. But like, just, like, so, um, it's sort of, it's, it's sort of like, okay, so then there's like cavemen, right? And they're just uh, like harvesting like important oats or whatever. And then like one of the cavemen like turns to the other caveman and is like, ooh, we should count these oats. And then like, you know, and, the other caveman's like, why, you know? And then the other caveman is like, well, but if we count the oats, we can start to create excess capital. And then the other caveman's like, what is capital? And like, well, capital is like what you use like for like to add value to goods and services. And this other caveman's like, me no need value for goods and services. Me value community, me value oats. Me only pick oats. Me only pick enough oats to feed me family. Why me need excess value? And then the other caveman's like, for excess capital for me, TikTok. Excess capital for dress sexy, make men like you good. Excess capital for shop at Sephora. Excess capital for funding art industry. Make war criminal whitewash crime with aesthetic brilliance. Excess capital, make world go round. Excess capital, bonus miles on Delta Silver. Excess capital for make museum have good panini. Our world no run on money. Our world run on flat Prosecco and day old panini. Your life. <laughs> and um, the other caveman was like, uh, but like I, me no agree that these oats have meaning. And then other other caveman goes, I don't care. Me stronger caveman. Me say excess capital create value for functioning society. And and then that's how capitalism was born. <laughs> so basically the. What, whoever the stronger caveman says has value, has, has value, and that's what money is. But sometimes, you know, it begs the question of, you know, what if the bigger caveman is a bad person? So that's where I come in to sort of just make, you know, other people's jobs uh, easier. Did that make sense? <laughs> Thank you so. Oh, oh my God! Was someone applauding? Oh my God! Please do it. Can you finish the applause break? Oh my God! I'm so sorry. Did you know it's a fun fact? So I was, I was, um, I was homeschooled, um, which is like total. I wish you wouldn't, is the thing. <laughs> Which is, and I came out totally normal, as you can see, being raised in an unstructured learning environment, as well as a fundamentalist religious environment, can completely adapt you to the seductions of normalcy. I am a regular woman. <laughs> it's interesting because, actually, um, when you think about it, the rise of evangelicalism in this country kind of dovetails with the birth of mass culture, and that also tends to make orgasm, procreation, everything related to the phallus um, more transactional than it should be. 
Uh, I don't, I never checked this against Google because I learned this in homeschool, but did you know that before the Industrial Revolution, um, there was no such thing as the contemporary orgasm? <laughs> this is serious. Back, this, I'm telling you that back then, if you were a man and you wanted to, you know, you just had to go to a neighboring farm with just a skillet full of cum and just hope that someone was home uh, who would let you toss it on their stomach. <laughs> the American, uh, it's a common misconception about Manifest Destiny that it was a gold rush when actually it was a white rush. Um, <laughs> And, and the West was just covered, you're nodding your head, the West was just covered with eligible long, young bachelors just balancing uh, skillets full of cum in search of a good woman. And I think that's kind of what led to this. Now eventually the figure in this animation does pull out a gun and shoot their way out of the womb which is a metaphor for what I want to do every day. <laughs> Come on, children! Oh, I'm sorry, I have to in my eye. Get it out. to do with the uh, hegemony of mid-century modernism. And if you've ever, uh, I think this is a Werner Patton chair, and if you've ever dated a, a graphic designer or a man who wears a Carhartt beanie, you will find that, that, that his, his, his erotic uh, attachment to the, the mid-century modern design aesthetic uh, does rival the orgasm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it's really important as a modern man in the creative industries to always um, put on your beanie, put on your padded little jacket, put on your fun little boots. Basically get dressed like you're about to carve Mount fucking Rushmore. <laughs> So you can hobble over to a coffee shop and work on a pitch deck. <clears throat> I like your uncomfortable laughter. Uh, uh, projections. <clears throat> okay, so this is a, a really, we're getting into the game. This is an animation by Tala called Sex Ed by God. And, you know, if you add a comma, or you just think of it a little bit different way, it kind of sounds like sex ed, by God. Um, <clears throat> now, this is about the dangers of, like, you know, when, when you don't grow up in the United States, which is the greatest country on Earth, you get really backwards ideas about female sexuality. <laughs> I did not grow up with these ideas. I went, you know, I'm, I was actually went, grew up to be uh, married to God. And we had uh, purity ring ceremonies. I actually didn't even know what my own pussy was until I was 26. And I think that's the way it actually, uh, it, it, it should be uh, in, this, in this country. I wanted to draw our attention to the escalator animation on the end here called Mr. Time. 
Now, a lot of these don't really have a beginning or an end. They're sort of looping, and um, some people think that you know a lot of the struggle of like Tala's characters and her work are about the modernity of like modern labor or you know the like non-dialectical nature of human progress. But uh, oh, hold on a second. I'm getting a call. I'm getting a call. Just stay here. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, no. <gasps> yeah, no, totally. Okay, yeah. So, um, okay. So, so let's start. Okay, start. Okay, start the press. Okay, we're going to make a press release. Okay. This, okay, we can then the next sentence. Start. This artist interrogates preconceived notions. No, um, this artist explores notion. No, I, this. The artist is going to explore preconceived notions of identity. The artist is going to interrogate the history of uh, painting. The artist is going to radically... Uh, the, uh, the artist is going to... We are so thrilled to present a suite of new works that are going to be installed. We're so ecstatic that the artist is going to present new works in the gallery. This is going to be the 287th presentation with the gallery. Utilizing methods. The artist utilizes methods to make their work. The artist is going to, we are so thrilled to represent. This institution is so thrilled to be working with artists. We invite you to an opening reception. We're ecstatic to be inviting you to the interrogation of an opening reception. We are so ex this the museum is thrilled to announce an interrogation of an open reception. The artists will utilize refreshments. There will be refreshments utilized at the opening reception. <laughs> latest series um, called Cloud Mommies. And as we all know, when female artists have children, the work tends to get really bad. <laughs> as soon as a female artist has a child, the work gets really bad. And it's hard, you know, I am not yeah, people say that I shouldn't be, you know, speaking on this level because I am not a mother, but I will have you know, I have been almost a mother five times. <laughs> Thank God for Plan B, or as I like to call it, later dummy. <clears throat> now, um, Tala has worked very hard to push against traditional, like overly sentimental depictions of motherhood. So you'll notice that these figures are very large. They're very abstracted. They almost don't appear as anything and they kind of fade into the background, which is, um, of course, related to the idea that once you have kids, you kind of become less of a person. She's the only one laughing, <laughs> and she can feel it. <clears throat> and a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, people don't really like, understand that a lot of Paula's work is actually about the history of painting, and not just peepees and, and, and pussies and stuff like that. And what she does is uses really, okay, so like, 
There's the clouds and it's sort of a big open space. And then she also uses the plane of the painting to make these drawings, almost like we're watching but from behind the glass. Now normally, if you want to make a painting that's sort of about the push-pull and opening up the picture plane, you you like you should be like a you should be like old, like an old white guy who like talks like this and like like normally when you want to make painting about painting, you like you just are like an old guy who talks like this and you have sex with your students and then you. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what like a old, you know what like a painter looks like? It's like a guy. Do you, you know what a painter looks like, right? He's just like a he's like a guy. He's like you you must you know, oh, and you know what this is, you know, and and then you must you know address you must attack the picture plane and you know make it big, make it red, and then they send more of them, and you get like sad. Um, and then you make like a big red one and I think you like, I don't know, you like give it to a cafe in exchange for like soup for a year and then maybe like 20 years later like someone will write about it in a book and like that's important. Like that's what being a painter is. So these are, you know, they're, they're, they're different than that which I think is really cute. <laughs> I think it's really cute and like also good for her for trying, you know what I'm saying? Because we can't all just, you know, we can't all just, um, you know, this is what an artist look like. And you go to school and you pay, what, how much is it now? 100,000? And you, your parents, you know, they come to this country because they care about you. And you are an ungrateful piece of shit. So you say, oh, I want to go to art school and listen to an old white man, even though you leave the country to get away from white men telling you what to do in the first place. And he says, oh, you know, take, oh, I use, and the man, and he hasn't been to a contemporary art exhibition in 40 years. And, and I think sometimes the school forget that they hired him. <laughs> and he's just on the payroll, and you have ideas because you know you are born of your time. Her aesthetic <coughs> landscape is informed by newer forms of media, but this person has not seen television. And they tell you, they say, no, oh, you have to paint. And, and you say, what if I want to? What if I want to paint after I have children? And then you get kicked out of the class. Because women can't. That's empty. That's really resonant. Everybody look at this. <laughs> are you getting this? This, this aesthetic, are you an artist? Not really, I love your modesty. <laughs> this aesthetic gesture is more significant than anything any female artist has ever made. <laughs> don't, don't, don't actually clap for that. <laughs> A lot of, you can't just stand anywhere you want. A lot of the work in this room is part of the art a series that the artist calls Shit Moms or Shit Mom, which if you put a comma in that one can also have a friendlier tone, like Shit Mom. Um, or shit, mom, I think it's a little um, gross and not right. But I also uh, really appreciate this piece, which is a recreation of the, um, the, the Mocha Gala hosted by Marina Abramovic back in uh, 2011. That's a little inside baseball, but for those of you who get it, they're really gonna remember it like tomorrow. <laughs> This piece up here um, is a really great abstraction of the phrase when the shit hits the fan. And then when that happens, and it's usually writ large when the shit hits the fan in terms of um, a lot of historical factors, then you know, women start making art and 
here we are. <laughs> this is also one of the artist's ways of depicting a female form without capitulating to um, the fraught nature of the female nude throughout art history. But it's also just an excuse for her to, you know, throw poo-poo, poo-poo around, to do poo-poo, poo-poo no good painting stuff. Um, because, you know, after she had kids, you know, the work really went downhill. Uh, so she had to kind of think about, how, how do I, how do I just kind of throw shit around, you know, and still make it work? And what we're seeing is a lot of the, the poo-poo pee-pee smears um, that she somehow tricked this museum into thinking is, is art. There's, uh, there's poo-poo there. Um, there's poo-poo there. Um, oh, okay. What do, you, what do you think about, like a, like a, like a colostomy bag that silkscreen hot girls have IBS? <laughs> that works. When art doesn't work, merchandise works. I don't know. I don't understand what's so hard to understand about a man pulling his own colon out of his anus and then strangling himself with it. Uh, this is also a man arguing with his own intestines. And this is a bunch of men drinking pee pee out of a giant kidney. Do you see the resemblance? Can you stand on either side of it, please? Can you pretend like you're drinking pee? Don't, don't get close to the painting, but just can you pretend like you're drinking pee? That's why we need more men depicted in the history of painting. <laughs> does anyone, um, before we wrap up, does anyone have any questions for me or about the work or what I do? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have any control over that. <laughs> yes? How did you get started in your line of work? <laughs> yeah, so I actually am a cave woman myself. And um, one day I just woke up and I decided that I needed more. I needed more. I needed to create content. I needed to do TikToks. I needed to promote. Um, culture and learn how to use a toilet and uh, this is this is where I this is where I ended up and it's 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 so great it's so great working with artists it's so great sublimating my own creative frustration into promoting the work of others it's so great taking on feminized forms of labor in the art industry which involve mostly promotion instead of creation. It's really great, um, you know, not just capitulating to like the capitalist mode of always needing to, frankly, just create information around art events as opposed to creating real art objects. And um, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful and that none of the money that I touch is, is bad at all. None of the money that comes to me through these giant conglomerates <laughs> that use artists <laughs> to create some sense of identity or importance because they committed themselves to the naked pursuit of capital at all costs is... I like being in this line of work. <laughs> I... <laughs> I enjoy 
being a creative. <laughs> I, I'm clean. I'm clean. This stuff is dirty. This work is dirty and it's not right. Do you know how hard I work to look like I don't have a body? Do you know how much work it takes to pretend that I don't have any real functions? That my in when I'm inside, I'm just tissue paper. Inside, I'm just tissue paper. And you're, you're bad. You're bad for going poo-poo.